Hi, I'm Corey Blakebro with SSP Innovations, and we're going to be talking to you today about Synergy Electric and the capability of GIS to be able to export that data into Synergy. Uh, and specifically, you'll notice here it's spelled with an I. If you spell it with two E's, that's okay too. That's the old version. Version 4.0 on is supported by the tool that we're going to be talking about here today. So, a lot of utilities use Synergy for analysis and, and just to further extend the abilities of their data and their assets in the field. But it can be very difficult to map uh, GIS data to Synergy Electric data. So what often happens is this data gets stale in Synergy. So it, the effort that it takes to effectively export this data and import it into Synergy can be difficult. And as such, a lot of times the data used in Synergy gets really old and out of date and it's way too hard for utilities to be able to effectively constantly move new data into Synergy Electric. So we've effectively set out to make it easier for a company to be able to export their data and import it into Synergy Electric as often as they need without messing with the configuration or having to get down into the grime details after the first time. So essentially, there are a lot of differences between GIS and Synergy Electric data, which is a lot of the complication in the software in the first place. So in GIS, for a given geometric network, you have the concept of edges and junctions. So a point here on the map would be considered a junction. A line is considered an edge. And this directly corresponds to features on the map as well. So an edge is also going to be a line feature. And a junction, such as this one, we're symbolizing, say, a switch here, is going to be a point feature. So it's fairly straightforward, so the edges and the junctions line up directly with features on the map. In Synergy Electric, it's not quite that simple. So this point on Synergy Electric is actually called a node, and this line is called a section. The difference is the extended data here, beyond just the shape data of the network, is going to be characterized differently. So this switch is going to be considered equipment and this equipment doesn't actually correspond with this node. It instead corresponds with this section. So in Synergy you are effectively allowed to place equipment on either the from node or the to node of a section instead of actually being placed on the node. And that's important because that completely differs from this functionality in, on the GIS side. So effectively, when you, have, when you consider a feature, you have a line feature and a point feature from GIS, and the point features, the shape data corresponds to a node. But the extended data, say if it, if it symbolizes something like a switch, will correspond to this piece of equipment. And a line feature still does directly correspond to a section. So you can see that a lot of this data differs between the two systems, and we're going to need to have an effective method to be able to transfer and translate the data over into Synergy. And this is what so many people struggle with. So the next step here is for us to build a tool to effectively export this data. Now, Synergy does have multiple methods of importing data into their application, and one of them is Middlelink. So Middlelink is actually a CSV file format. <laughs> so the Middlelink CSV file has each line considered as a directive. So the directives each have codes that correspond to what they're going to do once they're loaded into Synergy. So for example, if you have a row that starts with 101, that is effectively to create a node on the map in Synergy and any additional details are explicitly defined in the middling schema and effectively for a node, for example, that would be maybe the coordinates of the point on the map. Uh, and just to give a couple other examples, a 201 record would be to create a section and then beyond that uh, there are some other extended features that you can use. Uh, 301 I believe, creates a feeder 
There are also some other applications for extended features, like 1301 creates a transformer, and then additionally, you notice that they're going up by 100, so any additional records between those two are even more attributes about one of these particular types of objects. So there's a section directive, for example, that creates vertices on a section. So if it's not just a simple straight line, you can add the vertices. Uh, for transformers, you can start to add additional data about that asset. So now that we have the middle link format, the next step is to be able to export the data into this CSV format, and that's where our export tool comes in. The cool thing is that all the configuration is stored right here in our geodatabase, which is great. So you don't have to keep doing this every single time. Effectively, there's two different forms of configuration that we use. One of them is to be able to map object classes and feature classes in GIS over to objects in synergies. For example, we'll take the primary overhead and underground conductor feature classes and we'll go over and map them to sections in Synergy Electric. We'll take a switch feature class and we'll map it to the switch object in Synergy as well and that will be mapped in a table in the geodatabase. In addition, the middle link schema has a lot of specific configuration in the schema for these particular directives and those are going to be able to be mapped in addition to that table configuration through model names. So we're going to be able to assign model names to each individual class that's being used to fields and those fields can be used then when the system is going through the network and placed right here in the middle link file. So what that allows us to do is that our tool will trace downstream through the logical network to find the extents of the network. Then it will go through and find the features for each of these objects. And when it does, it will check that configuration table to see what object it corresponds to. It'll go through all the fields and grab attributes from those fields if they're configured to be used in the middle link export. Then all that data is poured out into these middle link directives. So the export goes through and it effectively converts the data into the CSV format. And now you have a file that's dated specifically to when you exported this data that you can keep if you even want to for historical purposes. And you can do this automatically or manually. So effectively, you can use our nightly batch suite to populate a CSV file in the middle link format at any interval that you'd like. And you can store them if you want to. So that's another added benefit. So whenever you need to, you can then import the middle link data through Synergy's native interface into the application. So once your data is loaded into Synergy Electric, you're not necessarily done. You're going to be able to massage and analyze your data as necessary from that point going forward with Synergy's additional capabilities. But additionally, Synergy also has a data model that's a little more restrictive than that of GIS. So for example, let's say that you have a complex edge here. So this line corresponding to this one down here is all one feature. And let's say you have another conductor branching out from that point. So this conductor, when it's loaded into Synergy, is going to be considered unfed because of its more stringent standards for data, where in GIS it may still be considered part of the network. So when you load data into Synergy, sometimes it gives you good opportunities to analyze your data and see effectively what is wrong and what needs to better meet standards. So some additional capabilities that you'll need to consider. A lot of the time, when you're looking at an attribute, you'll need to know whether or not you need to use the code or the description if it's a domain value. So we have configuration options for that, but in addition, when those values go into Synergy, you'll need to check your data warehouses and make sure that they support that. Because otherwise, you're gonna get some unknown values in your data when it's loaded into Synergy. So as you can see, we hope we've provided an effective way in order to better enable utilities to export their data into Synergy. And we've actually implemented this at several utilities now, and we've seen a lot of success from it. We're always looking to improve the product and add more hooks into Middlelink, but as a whole, we hope that you've seen great value from this tool, and please contact us if you have any more information that you'd like to know about it. Thank you. We've set out in order to achieve a better something. So we've set out to achieve a better method of doing so that can make it easy for utilities to be able to configure what they need to be able to affect the the so we've set out, I shouldn't start a sentence before I, I know how I'm finishing it, that's, that's important. Okay, I'm gonna try again. Okay. Zen, yeah. namaste. Okay. <laughs>
I finish my sentence and then I just sit here for a while. That's my that's my that's my strategy. <laughs> It'll run through this geometric network. It'll trace down down the uh, downstream. That's uh that's a little too watery. We're talking about electric here. Then the tool finds the GIS feature for each oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> I'm just playing with my markers. I can just This is the part where that's most of what I need to say and I don't know how to end. And I just like, you know, Drop just the mic. finish up. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> and that's a wrap. <laughs>